to all my listeners, whether you're a gold bug or you're concerned about inflation and protecting your capital, you need to check out my brand new conversation with Dan Ferris on the Stansberry Investor Hour podcast out now. You can easily access the episode by clicking the link in this video description box. Hope to see you there. Hi, this is Daniela Camboni and welcome back to Stansberry Research. Well, you have been asking for more Gareth Soloway. So here he is back again uh, to talk Bitcoin, Ethereum, Cardano, his thoughts on stocks and gold, of course. Gareth, good to see you. Welcome back. Hey, thank you, Daniela, for having me back. It is always a pleasure to talk to you. Always a pleasure uh, as well, Gareth, and obviously no shortage of volatility here. Uh, things are moving so quickly, you can change within an hour here. Um, but the last time you were on, obviously you, you made headlines uh, for your very, you know, what people would say bearish calls on Bitcoin. Uh, you called for a Bitcoin winter, saying you could see the crypto fall to 20,000. Um, and just when you thought 20,000 might sound bearish, I was reading a recent report from uh, Stifle earlier this week. And, and um, one of their analysts, Barry Bannister, says Bitcoin could plummet 76% from current levels to $10,000 by 2023. And he highlighted global money supply, the 10-year U.S. Treasury yield, and the plan tightening by the Federal Reserve as just some of the obstacles that could be in Bitcoin's way. So my first question to you is, are you sticking to a $20,000 call for Bitcoin or have you become a little bit more bullish or bearish? So, so for me, it's, it's 20,000 is my high end target for sure. I do think it can go a little bit lower. Um, I agree with Stifle in terms of, you know, if you look at past corrections or bear markets in Bitcoin, it's an 80% drop. And if you take the 69,000 high and, and take away 80%, you're basically at 10,000. So I understand where they're coming from in terms of that. And I agree that, you know, we're in an unprecedented period that we haven't seen for 20, 30, 40 years where inflation is now an issue and the governments around the globe are going to have to start taking away money from the system instead of pumping it in. And that's going to have an impact. I mean, I've looked at some of these stocks out there like Roblox and, and uh, Roku. I mean, Roku is down from $500 a share to like a hundred hundred dollars a share. I mean, that's a massive decline. And Bitcoin kind of is a risk on assets. So it, it's treated like a tech stock. So very likely you will see further downside. I'll start nibbling on a longer term entry for Bitcoin when it gets to 20. And then I'll just kind of keep buying all the way down. So if you don't mind just sharing uh, one of your charts now yep. on Bitcoin, um, just so you can kind of walk us through what to do here, because you, you have said you know, sorry, Bitcoin bulls. Are, are you? You don't see a hundred thousand this year, which is what a lot of people are hoping for. No, I mean, you know, last year it was going to be a hundred thousand. This year, now they're they're you know trying to trying to scrape it out and just throw it out there. I just don't see it. I mean, unless for some reason something happens where monetary supply all of a sudden starts to increase. That's the bull case for Bitcoin, the bull case for tech stocks. And at this point, all we see is worse headline inflation numbers, right? So, I mean, if all of a sudden inflation went back to 2% and we got into a recession, yeah, then I think that is a possibility. But I just do not see it, not with PPI numbers coming out recently near 10%. And just looking at the chart, Bitcoin's behaving very much like a chart should. All right, so you, you had this beautiful parallel trend line, this white line down here, matching perfectly with this one up here. Price came down to it. You got the technical bounce. And then look at this kind of head and shoulder pattern right yep. here. You went right back to that neckline before starting to roll over again. So on a technical basis, there's two points I'm watching on the chart in the near yep. term. This one right here, this orange one, if we break above it, you have potential for upside to 50 to 52,000, the midpoint. If you break below the white line, that's where you start heading down into the 20,000 range. You know, at first you'll have support at this low over here around 27, 28,000, 29,000. But very quickly, I do think you could get down to the previous all time high back in 2017, which is right around that 20,000 level. So, I mean, it is, it's a, it's one of those things where if you're an investor in Bitcoin, you have to take a longer term view if you're going to stick with it, because certainly what's going on in the macro economy, what's going on with inflation is just not bullish for, for crypto or Bitcoin. Okay, so does that disprove the thesis of many that came out saying Bitcoin's going to be you know, the greatest tool in your toolbox against the fight against inflation? Um, and is, 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 is gold beating it here? 
Yeah. So you know that I've called for the best performer between Bitcoin, the stock market and gold to be gold in 2022. So far, so good, right? I mean, gold has had a beautiful breakout. In fact, let's jump into the chart on gold Please. and take a quick look here. Let's see what we got. Um, you can see again, we had we had this wedge pattern. In fact, I think last time I was on, we discussed this wedge pattern. Yes. And we have seen a breakout now. And again, that's coming with the, the, un, the unnerving kind of issues with Russia and Ukraine and all these other things. But it's also now you're, you're seeing the pattern playing out. So you guys know I'm a big technician in terms of the charts. And I've talked about how this move up was two years. This consolidation is approaching two years. And it's bullish consolidation. Here's your breakout. And then the last thing I love to show this chart. It's such an important chart for investors to understand go back to your, your 1970s to 1980s chart on gold. And what you can see here is that it's replicating exactly what we saw back in the 70s. So from like 72 to 74, you had the big move. That's the equivalent of 2018 to 2020. We then went into kind of a consolidation pattern for a couple of years. And then this is what I think is now beginning on gold, this massive move up now, back then, it was $100 to $900. I don't really expect that type of percentage move. But I do think, again, seeing a 3000 handle on, on gold, you know, maybe even by year end is a possibility. And then maybe even 5000 within a couple of years on gold. So again, you know, gold to me is the safe play. I know a lot of people want Bitcoin to be that, that play where you kind of say, okay, you know, Bitcoin will protect us against inflation. It will in five or 10 years, I believe, not right now. Bitcoin is a risk asset. It's going to get treated like a risk asset until it gets more investors and calms down. I gotcha. So would you be a buyer of gold here if you're thinking it's going to 3,000, 5,000? Yeah, if, if, you, if you don't have any exposure at this point, I do think you put some in your portfolio. You know, maybe not, not crazy, 5%, 10% of your portfolio should be in, in the metals. You can spread it around a little bit too. I'm not as big a bull on silver, mainly because you have the industrial side where if the Fed does what I think they're going to do and raises interest rates multiple times this year, it's going to slow the economy. So then you have to worry about, you know, the demand for silver for industrial production and batteries of electric cars and so forth. But ultimately, spread it around to be exposed to metals, that's going to be your best way to protect yourself against inflation. Bitcoin gets sub 20,000. That's where I start to buy as a hedge. And I think it has a hugely upside move in the future. Okay. okay. I, you beat me to it. That was going to ask you, what would it take for you to step in and be a buyer yeah. of Bitcoin sub 20,000 for you? Yeah. 20,000. Like, you know, and, and, and the way I invest is, is I, I always am humble enough because I've, I've unfortunately learned my lessons in my early career the rough way by losing a ton of money. So what I do is I, I usually will put out an order at 20,000 or just sub 20,000. And then I'll do another one at 15 and another one at 12 and another one. You know, I, I don't go all in at one spot because I've learned my lesson that I've, I've been wrong too many times and it's better to kind of, you know, Know, dollar cost average in. I know you were saying that a lot of folks you spoke to got in at the 60,000 level. What do you tell those people? Wow. Um, yeah, that's, it's so hard. Um, I understand I was one of you guys when I was first started investing. I was one who was chasing momentum. Lucky, lucky for me back when I started investing, there was no Twitter. Social media was just beginning. So I didn't get the kind of the pumping that you see on social media, which I think is a hugely harmful thing. But what I would say is use it as a learning experience. Remember, the charts give you kind of a non-biased view of what's going on. You yeah. never want to chase. I would say at this stage, I don't know if I would cut the investment. Instead, maybe just look to dollar cost average when you get down towards 20. And maybe over the course of time, you can really bring your average in. Let's bring up a chart, if you don't mind now, Gareth, on Ethereum. Tell mm -hmm. us what's happening on, on the Ethereum landscape, how to play this crypto. Yeah, so let's take a look at Ethereum here. We'll go to, the, go to the daily chart. And again, Ethereum, the charts are just telling us so much, right? So you can see this trend line cutting right through. You had this beautiful retrace, little dip, retrace again. And now in the short term, we've broken this little low right here, which is short-term bearish. So I do think Ethereum in the near term probably comes down and tests 2300, 2375 right down here. Um, right. Then the question is, does it hold? And for me, I'll start watching this trend line here, which will be the next area of support. And then if it gets through that, this area here will be major support. Now, if Bitcoin goes to 20 or, or 10,000, then you have to assume 
you know, Ethereum is headed back to probably sub 1000 when that happens. So again, this is all contingent on Bitcoin kind of dumping out and the cryptos continuing to roll over. But if that does happen, then yeah, you're looking at, you know, probably being, being able to buy Ethereum at $750 again, which would be for me an awesome entry price. Uh, what about what's going on with the miners? Would that have any impact on, on, on the price, Gareth, with this crackdown on whether Bitcoin miners are green and that they might shut down those that aren't, uh, would that impact price down the line? Yeah, you know, it, going back to 2017 and 2018, we did see the price of mining Bitcoin. You know, basically the price of Bitcoin got lower than the cost to mine it. At least that's what I was seeing back then. So in short periods, that can happen. And I think it does happen in this in this winter, if you will. Um, but I think, again, that the longer term narrative of Bitcoin is only getting stronger. I mean, when you see Microsoft buying Activism Blizzard, Activision Blizzard, when you see countries like El Salvador adopting it and other countries starting to adopt it more and more, it's just one more piece in the longer term puzzle for cryptocurrency to survive and thrive. So even though I'm bearish that that you know we're getting into this kind of environment where the Fed is going to crush assets, a lot of these risk assets, the longer term is super positive for things like Bitcoin. If you don't mind, Cardano, please, because Card a lot of people have been stopping me saying, hey, I'm tempted to buy Cardano here around the buck level as we're speaking. What is one to do? Is Cardano a buy now or wait and see? Yeah, so Cardano, right, this is a very interesting chart. So you have basically major support right here at this 98 cent level. And you could see again, all the way back into you know early 2021, it kept on hammering on this level. Now it's still holding that support. That is your key support. You do not want to see Cardano trading below that area down here. Now on the other side, if it breaks above this down sloping trend line, which connects the highs, then that would be a huge buy signal. Right now, that line's around $1.24, $1.25. It okay. will continue to slope lower. So what I'm doing here is I do have a little position in Cardano. It is very small. But if it broke out, I would add to that position aggressively. And then if it breaks down here, I would probably at that point cut it and stay on the sidelines until it gets to a major support, the next major support. Okay. If I could squeeze in one more polka dot. Yes. So let's take a look at Polkadot here. Polkadot, I have a very small position on as well. I have this long-term trend line right here. You can see connecting the lows of December 2020 through the low of July 2020, uh, 21, and then it touched it right here. As long as this level holds, I think there's potential for some upside. I'm not going to go out on a limb and say this is going back to $30 or $40 in the near term, but as a swing trader, I think it could easily trade back north of $20 to $21 where you know from an entry at 18, that's actually a pretty nice near-term return. So I think near-term bullish as long as this trend line holds. So again, you know, think about it like this. A lot of these cryptocurrencies are holding very important technical levels. We saw the Bitcoin level, right? If we flip back to Bitcoin here, you know, this white line right down here, that is a very important level. We saw the Cardano line, we saw the, pol the polka dot line. Crypto has to hold here. It has to make a stand. And if not, I think you get that next big wave, which again, probably takes us to 20,000 on Bitcoin. So critical, critical time, critical. Gareth. Yes. Critical. Okay, doing a complete 180 here, changing uh, sectors. You've been very vocal on the tech stocks, as tech names like uh, Teladoc and Roku collapse 75% from their highs. Uh, you say that big players like Amazon and Apple will use their huge market cap and uh, cash piles to come in and buy. Mm -hmm. Yes, and so, that, so that's starting to get more and more interesting. When these things were trading at ridiculous levels, and I'm gonna throw up Teladoc here and show you guys on the screen, you know, it does, didn't make sense. You know, Amazon was not gonna pay up for these assets when, when Teladoc was trading north of 300. But now you're getting to a level on Teladoc where it's $66, maybe it goes down to 50-ish. But I will say this, I've started to inch in at least for a short-term trade on stocks like Roblox, which is now below $50, uh, Teladoc, um, my list again, I have a list here. And it's just, you know, it just, we, we're looking at like SE, Zoom, PayPal, and various others, even Roku. And Roku is another one where it makes a lot of sense where they have hardware, right? So you have the Roku devices and so forth. Yeah. And Netflix is even a potential buyer or suitor here where they're going to say, okay, we had a tough quarter. Netflix did have a tough quarter. We saw it get pounded. And now you're looking at an asset that was almost $500 trading at 110 
And it's yeah. going to start to look a little interesting because these, these companies need to produce growth. They're not growing as fast as they once were. Amazon, I think, I think Teladoc with Amazon makes a lot of sense. They have Amazon, you know, pharmacy or, you know, that kind of segment of the business. And if you added a Teladoc in, it would give them instant credibility in that field. So definitely some interesting things as you get lower here. One thing I want to make clear is that if you look at the dot-com bust, and really some of these drops are very reminiscent. I mean, 500 yeah. to $100 is very similar. You know, you're starting to get in that range, but Amazon went from 110 to about $6. So there's still potential downside. Don't get too crazy in terms of buying heavily, but I will say that a bunch of these today I started nibbling on and I'm looking for some near-term bounces and some play off of maybe some buyout stuff coming in the next few months. What about Facebook? Yeah. Facebook actually is one of my larger positions right now. I've been accumulating as it's been coming down. Um, amazingly, you know, this the, the chart on on Facebook. When you think about it in terms of technicals, at some major, major pre kind of you know COVID ranges here. And again, just to show a couple of charts here, and these are some old levels. Let me get rid of those. But you can see here, huge, huge level coming into here. We've already pierced this one. You're into this area, and these are both of where it was trading pre COVID. The way I look at it is you have an asset now in Facebook that's trading at a 14 to 15 forward PE. That is a very cheap asset, even in spite of the Fed hiking in interest rates over the next year. So you're looking at something where they're now getting into the metaverse. There could be major growth. I think smart money is going to start to rotate in here. I certainly have. I wouldn't call myself smart money, but you know, certainly looking at the, the, the charts as well as the fundamentals. And Facebook for a trade over the next 6, 12, 18 months makes a lot, a lot of sense right here. All right. Really good insights. Gareth, I could spend all day with you and your charts. Right? Thank Just, you. I, I love, love it. Them. <laughs> I could tell you love it. You, you see your passion. Uh, so thank you so much for sharing that with us. Really, really good insights. Thank you. Thank you so much for having me. It is always, always a pleasure. I hope all of you enjoyed it. Stay tuned to Stansberry Research for more content. And don't forget to sign up for exclusive content you can't get anywhere else at DaniellaCombone.com. That's it for me. Thanks for watching. Opinions expressed on this program are solely those of the contributor and do not necessarily reflect the opinions of Stansbury Research, its parent company, or affiliates.